Good afternoon. This is Heidi Krantz from the UVM Extension New Farmer Network. And I'd like to welcome everyone to our, the, our next webinar series presentation, Assessing Loan Readiness. With us today we have Sam Smith, who is a farm business specialist at the Intervale Center, which is based in Burlington, Vermont. Sam works with farms and value-added businesses to develop long-term business plans and build management capacity. We're also joined by Josh Jerome, who is the loan officer with Community Capital of Vermont. He works with all sectors of the economy and is on the organizing committee with Slow Money of Vermont and is also very active in his community. Josh has spent some time working on his own business plan for an organic beef production business uh, and after going through that process decided that he was going to stick with being a loan officer and so he's here today to share with us his uh, knowledge along with Sam. I'd like to welcome Kate to the program and Kate if you have questions please take a moment to sign in on the chat room if you have any questions and if you'd like us to add you to our network you can also share your email address with us and we will uh, go ahead and get started with assessing loan readiness and so I'm going to turn this over to Sam. Thanks Heidi. Um, so once again my name is Sam Smith. I am a farm business specialist with the Intervale Center. Um, I work primarily through the Farm Viability Program, uh, which is funded by VHCV, and I do usually do a two-year business planning process with established farms. Um, they have to have been in business for three years and have over 15,000 in gross sales. Um, I work with all different types of businesses, um, from dairies to sugar makers to diversified farms to livestock operations um, and I really enjoy what I do. Um, one of the key things that I work with farmers on is to talk about um, the impact that debt has on their farms um, and so one of the keys here is um, really thinking about loan readiness. Um, if you're a farmer and, and you're interested in either going out and taking out that first loan or um, maybe accessing a loan to build your business or purchase property. So I'm going to talk about those things. So the first thing I always ask is do you actually, do you actually need the loan or do you absolutely need that loan? Um, sometimes I show up at farms and they have a lot of new equipment in the driveway and um, that's a sign to me that they probably um, have some debt service already incurred. And um, one of the things that I always ask farmers is, is there another way to get that service done? Or um, in, the, in the case of purchasing land, maybe um, could you actually lease land and keep the capital on hand to uh, operate your business, especially if you're in a startup phase? So um, just checking checking to make sure that you absolutely need the money and if you do, um, the second question I ask is do you have the cash flow to cover those payments? So um, it's great to be able to access money and, and um, lenders are willing to work with you um, usually to, to access that capital and they're going to need to see on your end some planning. We'll talk about that a little later on but I always just check with people and really make sure um, are you going to have the, the money to make that payment every month or in the case of working with some of the ag lenders, they're much more flexible about when you can make payments, but um, are you really going to have that money on hand to make the payments when, they, when you need to make them um, and so you don't get into trouble? Um, and then the last question I really ask in, in terms of if you need the loan or not is if that, the loan that you're taking out is going to help you make more money. Because at the end of the day, um, if you're accessing capital in any form, you not only want to be able to pay back that loan, but you want to use that, that capital to make you more money. That's the overall goal. If you're using that capital for any other purpose, um, and it's probably not going to work out in the long run. So um, there, there are three basic types of loans that I tend to work with people on. 
Um, one is sort of a, a line of credit, which is, is going to cover, uh, usually cover seasonal fluctuations in a business cycle. So uh, in terms of the cash flow, and, you know, an example of this would be a vegetable farm where uh, a lot of the costs are incurred in the spring um, and then the revenue is not realized until the fall. So they may pay for, you know, seeds, um, fertilizer, things like that up front in January or February and not actually start making money until June or July. And lenders understand this and uh, if you can demonstrate through a cash flow projection that this is, you know, this is the type of business model that you have, they will be willing to work with you in terms of establishing a line of credit. Um, the second type of loan would be an operating loan. Um, a line of credit is technically an operating loan but it's a short term operating loan. Um, and then the, so other operating loans would be, you know, loans around equipment or um, infrastructure or livestock. Um, and they generally, the repayment period on those is up to seven years. Oh, I forgot to say on a line of credit, you're going to need to pay that down usually in 12 to 16 months uh, entirely. And it usually has a relatively high interest rate. Um, the operating loan, it's going to be usually up to seven years in terms of the re repayment period. Um, and the interest rate will really vary based on who the lender is and what type of borrower you are. FSA has some pretty favorable loans for um, new farmers or starting, beginning farmers. Um, and those repayment terms are often really flexible as well. Um, and then the last type of loan that I, I would talk about is the real estate loan. Um, which is generally to secure the purchase of a farm. Um, and those loans usually run in the 20 to 30 year repayment period. Um, and they're, they're usually around a, a, they can be a fixed or a variable rate, but usually a fixed rate over the course of that time and it's, it's based on a national rate. Um, so those are the types of loans that I generally see farmers needing. Um, I really stress when I work with uh, farmers or value-added businesses the actual cost of the loan. Um, so it's really great when you get an influx of $30,000 to um, help you buy a piece of equipment, but the reality is that you're going to end up paying quite a bit of interest on that loan. Um, and so I just put up a couple of examples of, of what the total interest you're going to pay on the loan over time are. Um, and as you can see in, in this example, the $30,000 lo loan is going to, it's going to actually um, end up costing you around $5,600 in interest. Um, when you talk about a, a more long-term loan with the purchase of a farm, you're actually going to see a really significant amount of interest on there. So, and that interest is actually money that is just going out the door. It's the cost of doing business for you um, and not having that capital on hand. Um, so that's why um, ideally if you're taking out that $200,000 loan on the purchase of the farm, you're going to build that equity back, but you want to be able to make money above and beyond that interest uh, amount there. So the first thing that I, I really stress with most farmers, and it's actually one of the, the things that I usually do right off the bat is to do a monthly cash flow uh, for at least a 12 month period um, and if possible two to three years. Um, I generally do a 12 month cash flow and then projections for the next two years after that. And that's three years of projections are really what um, most lenders will be looking for. They're going to do their own analysis of the projections and come back to you with questions and Josh will probably talk about that some more. Um, but, and the basic formula for your cash flow is um, it's, it's like a profit or loss or income statement from your business, but it basically has your gross income or revenue um, minus your variable expenses and fixed expenses and you're going to come out with a net income. And then you're going to take that net income and you're going to deduct any capital activity after that. And that, in this case, the loan payment is that capital activity. Um, because that loan payment is usually going against principal, um, such as equipment or something like that, 
Um, it's not going to show up in your profit and loss, um, but you're going to end up with a net cash. And if that net cash number is negative, um, that is a real reason for concern. Um, so, and I have definitely seen that in working with some farmers and business owners. Um, I put up this beautiful sample cash flow, uh, which is quite scary uh, for non-financial people. But the cash flow here, um, this is just a template. I know it's really hard to read, but if you are interested in accessing a loan, um, it would be great to sit down with someone like me or um, any uh, a UVM service provider or even a, a loan officer and ask them to help you through this. Loan officers have some stipulations about what they can and can't do, but um, anybody in the Vermont uh, capital provider community or in the technical assistance community um, is really helpful in help in guiding you how to, to really make this an accurate statement so you understand what your cash on hand is going to be at any one time during the year. Um, so loans are a really useful tool and I, you know, I often stress with farmers or business owners that debt service can be really detrimental to a business, but it can also allow you to grow your business and make more money. Um, so and some of the reasons that, that they're useful, you know, they can help to smooth out those seasonal fluctuations in income. Um, they allow you to, to purchase things like a farm or a piece of equipment that you wouldn't be able to otherwise and then spread that cost out over time, which is really nice. Um, they allow you to, to leverage your current assets to make more money. So um, they allow you to put down some collater collateral that you may have built in the business or have personally um, and take that and make money. If you have a really good plan, that's pretty simple to do. Um, and then for startups or new farmers, um, they allow you to cover some of those initial costs that you just wouldn't be able to cover, cover otherwise. So the Vermont lending community has been great in terms of uh, working with startups, you know, and Josh will talk about this more, but um, new farmers are really in a great position to be able to access capital uh, if they have a really good plan and um, start to develop a farm business or a value-added business uh, that has the potential to be, uh, you know, a lifelong vocation or something that they grow and then sell eventually. Um, so some potential pitfalls of borrowing money. Um, if you, Planning is key and taking out a loan without a proper plan can lead to some really um, challenging situations, one with, in dealing with your lender, but also um, the potential long-term long implications in, of the sustainability of the business and also to your, your personal credit. Um, one of the things that I see um, relatively frequently is that people have become reliant on an annual line of credit um, or even are using credit cards as an annual line of credit. And it, they're using that over, over time, they become really accustomed to it and it masks some of the shortcomings or short, shortfalls in their, their annual operating income. And over time, they start to access more money. They have a good, you know, if they have a good working relationship with their lender, um, and they don't understand that the business is actually operating at a net deficit. Um, and they start to dig a hole, um, and that's the last point on this slide, where they start to ac accumulate more debt and more debt, and they're actually not making more money. And so they end up in, they can actually end up in a really challenging situation where they end up going bankrupt in the end because they don't, they accumulate more debt than their, their assets on hand and, uh, and they don't have the ability to, to leverage more money to stay in operation and it probably at that point wouldn't be a good idea to anyway. So, so the key point in accessing a loan is really that planning is essential. So um, you should always do detailed and accurate projections. Um, work with someone if, if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself. You know, usually we start people off with a
cash flow template like the one that you saw before and um, work off their actual numbers that they've accumulated over the period of their operation or if they're a new farmer, um, we'll work to help them understand what their potential market is and then they can do some, they can make some educated guesses as to what their actual revenue and expenses are going to be. But you want to make sure that you're going to be able to cover the loan payments. Uh, we, you, you really need to make sure that you have the cash on hand to cover it too. Just saying I'm going to make 30000 next year doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have $1,500 in April or May to cover that particular payment. And you, it's much better to be able to go to the bank and say, I need to have flex, a flex, flexible payment schedule than it is to say, I'm not going to be able to make my payment this month because I didn't figure out when the cash was going to come in and when, when I was going to need to pay you. Um, once again, don't borrow unless you absolutely need it. Um, so you really should be able to borrow only when you're making money on the money that you've taken in. Uh, establishing a good relationship with your lender. I'm sure Josh will talk about this, but the farmers and business owners uh, who have gone in and worked with their capital provider and really uh, have a history of borrowing with them um, are going to be much more likely to be able to access a loan. And this last point is my favorite point, which is um, create a farm business plan. So really think about not only the financial projections for your farm, but what your long-term goals are, what your personal financial goals are, and, uh, and then if you need to access capital within that, um, you'll have a much better sense of what, what you need for the future as well because part of this is you may be able to access a loan at the beginning of your, your business that may restrict the, the type or amount of capital that you can access later on. So the more detailed the plan or the more you can think ahead, uh, the better off you'll be. And I will pass it along to Josh now. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, that was a good introduction, Sam. And I'm glad you touched on cash flow. That's definitely a huge piece of coming to any lender. Um, so my name is Josh Jerome. I'm the Senior Loan Officer at Community Capital of Vermont. Um, and we are a nonprofit organization based in Barrie. Um, we do lending into all sectors of the economy. Uh, most, uh, most of our portfolio is uh, based in startup ventures. Um, and, you know, so food trucks, maple sap operations, uh, value added, food producers, restaurants, flooring companies, um, service related industries, you name it, uh, we're all over the place. Uh, we do fully amortized loans up to $100,000 uh, in lines of credit, uh, working capital, uh, equipment, inventory, purchase orders, and we also will refinance debt. Um, we, you know, take the uh, sort of uh, the sort of the basic um, with any lending program. There are going to be some common fundamental credit factors, uh, which can be referred to as the five C's of credit: um, character, capacity, capital, collateral, and conditions, um, which are used um, for evaluating risk for all loans. Um, and so. The farming sector is a little bit different. Um, a lot of uh, lenders who are, who are doing uh, farm loans or ag loans um, will weigh those categories a little differently than a traditional small business loan or a microfinance loan. Uh, and, and so when, when, when loan officers are assessing character, you know, we're looking at credit scores, um, which that is, you know, a, a huge, not a huge, but it, it can be, it, it tells a lot about someone's repayment ability um, and the likelihood of a loan being repaid again. Um, peer references are also important for lenders to get an outsider's perspective. Um, and, you know, so I, as a loan officer, I try to dig up as much information from somebody as possible when they apply for a loan. I want to know all the details. So I think it's important that if you are thinking about applying for a loan, that, you know, if there's anything that is in your past credit-wise, 
uh, personally, then just come forward with it because chances are a loan officer is going to find out about it anyway. Um, I like the application process. Um, working with an applicant, um, I get to see how they can handle uh, information requests via phone, email, um, and it, it's, it, it indicates how um, how important the process is to them in getting a loan. Um, so I, I put a lot of emphasis on challenging applicants um, and seeing if they can um, give me information when I when I need it. Um, capacity, uh, you know, lenders will look into what their past experiences. Um, tell them about running a business uh, and the type of agriculture enterprise they are running, um, and you know. So, do they have record-keeping skills? Can you create a profit and loss statement? Um, do you know what a profit and loss statement is or a balance sheet? Um, are they going to be using financial management tools like QuickBooks or something similar to that? Um, I don't. We don't require. Uh, our businesses to utilize QuickBooks or another suite like that. However, uh, I will. That would be the that would be ideal. But if you if somebody can provide me a handwritten profit and loss statement uh, and go through their process of how they came up with that, then I'm I'm satisfied. Um, and what is their entrepreneurial spirit? Also, um, how energized are they? In just Describing um, what they're producing um, and what their service is, um, that's that's important. So that, that's going to assess a little bit of capacity and a little bit of character also. Um, capital. Um, Josh, if um, I could interrupt. All lenders like to see what the applicants. Before you go on, yeah. Josh, I see there's a question regarding back to character. What kind of peer reference do you usually look for? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, so if if there's somebody who you've worked with before in farming, um, in the business that you're trying to get in, or you know, if, if so, if you're a farmer, is there another farmer that you've worked with in the past? Um, that's something that be, that would be critical. Um, if you're fresh out of school, maybe a professor. Um, so those are the types of, of, of references um, that I would be looking for. You know, you can have sort of character references, traditional friends and family, but I would only use maybe one of those. If you're if you're presenting three, then just try to just use one character, friend or family um, as a reference. Um, so. Um, yeah, so back to capital, you know, so all lenders like to see what the applicant's um, quote unquote skin in the game is. Um, now, obviously, that's not always possible uh, with any enterprise. Um, there might be capital shortages from that, um, that business owner or entrepreneur. Um, and so, you know, for community capital at least, you know, that's not a requirement. Uh, for some loan products out there, you know, it might be a requirement. Maybe uh, a lender is going to look for 10% um, or 5% of the total project would have to be contributed by, by the borrower. Um, but there are a lot of lenders who do not require that. Um, some alternative lenders uh, will look at the sweat equity uh, in the in, in the enterprise. Also, will will consider that as as equity. Um, and quite often, I run into situations where uh, people will say that they have you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars of equity um, in, 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 in an enterprise, and what they're actually saying is that they used um, fifteen twenty thousand dollars of credit card debt, um, which for whatever reason, they think is equity, but that's that's really not. Um, they still owe money to this this financial institution. So uh, that's something I see consistently out there across sectors. Um, collateral, time, uh, the types of collateral um, that a lender would be looking for, you know, the equipment um, that would, you know, for a farm enterprise, tractors, trucks. Um, any any kind of kind of equipment is going to have some value. Now, um, it's going to have a market value. I mean that that equipment, piece of machinery, cost the business owner something at one point in time. 
um, and through depreciation that market uh, value is going to uh, decrease. Um, but for a lender's perspective, um, you know, if, if you bought a, a piece of equipment for $10,000, um, I'm going to value that, depending on what it is, at maybe $4,000. Um, and every lender is different, um, and it's based off from experience with liquidating assets. Uh, when a loan was bad, that's what traditionally happens, is assets need to be liquidated, uh, and, and they get liquidated for pennies on the dollar uh, most often. So, um, so there's oftentimes there's conversations between applicants and loan officers where an applicant believes that they have you know a lot of uh, a value in their equipment, but in the real the reality is that that value is is usually thirty to fifty percent um, less, um, or I should say thirty per, thirty to fifty percent of what the applicant's actually valuing it of. Um, so when there is a collateral shortfall, loan officers will um, sort of inquire as to other assets, um, personal assets, uh, vehicle, real estate, um, and when that's not there, you know, we would look for cosigners, um, loan guarantors, um, and cosigners, you know, can be friends or family. Um, again, a, a lender would sort of assess. Uh, the ability for that person to be a cosigner. Um, do they have assets? Do they have personal cash flow that could make up a debt service each month? Um, and, and, and the same would go with a loan guarantor. And really the difference um, between the two is, you know, those institutions that do credit reporting um, would report to the credit bureaus differently on a cosigner as opposed to a loan guarantor. Um, and traditionally, the way when a loan goes bad, that uh, recourse happens usually goes after the, the, the signers of the notes um, and then loan guarantors. Um, and so, and then conditions. Um, to a certain extent, the farm applicant control, can control his or her own operation. However, beyond the farm gate, there are the regional and local market factors, which are already in place um, or in active development. It may affect the borrower and their enterprise. Um, so in order to understand the market demand, both good and bad, of the economic region uh, where they're operating, you know, applicants must tap into local resources to answer the number of important questions. You know, what is the local demand for that good or service? Um, how, how is it being gauged? What is the competition? Is it growing? Is it, is it decreasing? Why is it decreasing? Um, and what are the infrastructure challenges that sometimes a business owner just has no ability to control whatsoever, whether it be food hubs or processing facilities? Um, so these are things that a loan officer would, in the 5C categories, would sort of assess. Um, and so. All lenders are different, and they're going to uh, assess these categories differently. So for, just for example, you know, at Community Capital Vermont, we, we look at 20 different variables, um, and we score these variables. Some of them are quantitative, some of them are qualitative, um, and they are weighted differently for startups and existing businesses. Um, you know, we, I often will go through this metric with an applicant and we'll change the scoring over the application process. Um, and in the end, uh, it's going to compute a, a score, and then that score is going to help the lender decide if that individual um, is a good risk um, in the type of interest rate that their loan might generate. Um, and so that's, and so there's a lot of the qualitative piece uh, is, is pretty important, and there are a lot of conventional lenders that will look at, you know, they need a, a, a minimum credit score, um, and they need minimum collateral requirements. Um, so it's important that when you're looking for an, a lender that um, you know uh, exactly what sort of 
the ability that you have in your information to know exactly what lender is going to be able to help you because if, if your credit score is not high enough or if you don't have enough collateral, some lenders might not be able to help you where others won't have a problem at all. Um, some of the things that I find most important um, and Sam certainly touched on that, um, is when I'm assessing an application, I am looking for the cash flow statement. So cash is king. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's every sort of business owner's nightmare, really, to, to work on cash flow statements. So that's why it's, it's critical that if, if you are looking for a loan and um, that you s seek out some help, you know, with UVM Extension, um, Small Business Development Center, uh, any, any qualified business counseling organization out there is going to be able to help you. Um, so this is a pretty important piece um, for us. And, you know, there's a lot of lenders, too, uh, like Community Capital Vermont, um, Vermont Community Loan Fund, uh, Northern Community Investment Corporation, who have development services within their organization. So if an applicant comes to me and um, they need a little bit of help doing their cash flow, uh, then I will sit down with them in the application process and help them go over their cash flow. Um, and I won't do that for them. Um, they're going to have to do the work. Um, so it sometimes can, can draw out an application process because maybe they don't know Excel or Excel scares them a little bit. Um, and, and, you know, and putting um, uh, formulas and cells and connecting different sheets together can be, in, can be intimidating sometimes. Um, but the cash flow is the most important thing because that's going to show you if you can pay back that loan every single month. Um, and they should really reflect the seasonality of every business model. Um, so, like what, what Sam w touched on with the Barry Enterprise, you know, you're going to have money out in the first part of the year, and you're not going to get money back in until the second part of the year. So, you know, some people just, they take expenses, and then they divide that by 12, and they spread it out over a year, and that's just not, that's just not correct. That's just not the correct way to, to model cash flow. Um, also, um, existing businesses. So if you're an existing business, maybe you've not had to borrow money before, but now you are because you're growing, um, you should have the ability to come up with a profit and loss statement. That's going to be part of um, the application package. Um, I've seen a number of businesses that have been in operation for three, five, even ten years, uh, and they have no ability to produce a profit and loss statement, um, which is critical tools for assessing the financial health of any enterprise, um, and balance sheet, too. Um, these are going to be required documents if you're in business for at least two years. Um, a lot of lenders, you know, will fluctuate. They'll consider any any enterprise less than two to three years old as a startup. So if you're getting up over three years of age in your enterprise, then you should be able to produce profit and loss statements. Um, that's going to be a must. Um, so sometimes we have people that come to us, and we have to go through that that process of of creating a profit and loss state, statement for them. Um, again, QuickBooks would be ideal or something like that, but it can be handwritten. Um, another important piece when you're applying for a loan um, that's going to be part of your application package um, is demonstrating um, the market demand. Um, so, you know, if you're a startup enterprise, can you demonstrate to a lender uh, of the market demand and Conversely, if you're an existing business, you know, can the financial statements um, equate, the financial statements do not equate to market demand solely. Like, there has to be some other um, kinds of primary and secondary data sources that are out there that you can utilize to make your case uh, for the demand of your good or service. Um, so, the proof is in the pudding. Um, 
and, and I don't mean that in the sense that I want you to bring pudding to your loan officer, but the, the you're going to have to prove to them that um, there's a demand for whatever you're doing, uh, and it's up to you to let that that loan officer know uh, with with data. Um, so that's that's critical. That's I find a lot of a lot of applicants struggle with creating cash flows um, and showing that demand, which is so incredibly important. Um, so, so let's talk about an application package. Um, an app, you know, a pretty standard application package um, is going to consist is going to is going to fluctuate between lender to lender, but it's overall. You know, you're going to have an application from that institution, um, and you're going to have a personal financial statement in there, which you're going to have to put down all of your personal financial information on, um, and then you're also going to need to put down your business financial information. Usually, you would need to produce two to three years of tax returns, both personal and business, if the business applies. Um, if you're a startup business, you're going to have to come up with a business plan. Um, obviously, the size of the business plan uh, is going to range in size. I've seen business plans from three pages to 60 pages. So it really just depends on the enterprise. Um, and uh, projections. You know, uh, we require two years uh, of projections. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of people might require three. Um, and some, you know, some enterprises when they're creating projections, they'll just do five years. Um, and really, you know, after after two years, who knows what those projections are actually going to be? I mean, they're just projections, right? But it's important to to go through that exercise and do two to three years of projections. Um, for existing businesses, you know, we're going to be looking for an executive summary letter that just sort of outlines. Why you're borrowing money? Where the organi where the business is today, um, and how that money is going to help you uh, move forward. Um, and 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 then for enterprises that are less than two or three years old, uh, a business plan. Uh, one of the things that I is a pet peeve of mine is that on the application itself, um, if the application asks for information. Um, Please put it on the application. Um, don't make a note on the application that says it's in the business plan or see tax returns. Um, that's a first impression, um, and those usually last the longest, and for me are the most critical. So, you, you know, if somebody's asking me for money, I sort of in, uh, assume and anticipate that they're going to fill out the paperwork that I give them in full. Um, so, so. So that gives you an idea of uh, what it is loan officers sort of look for um, and what types of documentation um, you would need um, to, to create uh, and compile to present to a lender. Um, and so like how, so how do you know which lenders to, to go to? Um, so the capital continuum um, here sort of gives you a snapshot of the, the landscape of Vermont lenders and what their sort of risk appetite is. You know, all the way to the left, the lower risk, the least riskiest are banks, the conventional banks, uh, community banks. They're, they're going to be, they're going to take on the least amount of risk. Um, and then you're going to have the community-based lenders, um, like Community Capital Vermont um, or Vermont Agricultural Credit Corporation, VITA, um, Vermont Community Loan Fund, um, Northern Community Investment Corporation. They're going to they're going to take on a sl slightly more debt because um, they're they're mission driven, um, and we're going to be looking at the cash flow uh, primarily to assess whether or not um, it's a it's an enterprise that we want to invest in. Um, and so, and then once when you get further to the right, you get you know angel investors and venture capital. Um, I always try to push back with people who say that they could borrow uh, money from friends or family, um, and I always push them to do that because that's going to be the most flexible and cheapest money that anybody can find out there. Um, so I, I really challenge applicants on why they don't want to borrow money from friends and family if it's available. 
Um, some reasons are good, um, and, but I, I still like to push people on that, and I, and I know other lenders will also. Um, and so, um, there's there's some other, you know, the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund, their Flexible Capital Fund. Are, are, these organizations are fairly new in their financing, um, and they would. Um, traditionally look at enterprises that are well established, million dollars in sales, and then sort of um, be able to put in a large chunk of capital for a, a period of growth. Um, and then sometimes, you know, I, I have applicants here, or I, I might be talking to a potential applicant. And I go through all of these things that they might have to compile for an application package, uh, and I, they think to themselves, why would they do all that work? You know, writing a business plan and coming up with projections uh, when they can just reach into their pocket and pull out this little plastic card, and all their problems are solved. Um, well, that's that's not really the case. So I mean, I, I encourage everybody to uh, to rethink that notion of credit cards are a good way to start up an enterprise. Um, that's, that's something that you should definitely reconsider if you're thinking about it. Um, if you miss one, one payment, you know, your interest rate could skyrocket. Um, and credit card companies are not as flexible um, as uh, con uh, conventional banks and alternative banks. Um, you know, at least with a banker um, or a, a non-conventional lender, you can help form a relationship over a period of time, which then can help you in instances where cash flow is tight. Um, and so I would I always ask people um, to reconsider using a credit card, but you know, in the end, it's their decision. Um, and if you are going to use a credit card, then you know maybe it's smaller purchases because it does help you increase your credit score. If there's a purchase that you're going to make every month of fifty dollars, then use a credit card and pay it off every month. Um, it's just going to help build up your credit. Um, there's there's another uh, way to raise, to raise money also um, that's sort of new uh, over the last six years, and that's crowdfunding. Um, if you're not aware of crowdfunding, crowdfunding. It's in essence the process of raising a little bit of money from many people. Um, Kickstarter, Indiegogo um, are sort of like the leaders in that sector. Uh, they've been doing this now for about seven, eight years. Um, and it's not investors who, who participate in this are not getting a financial return. You know, maybe they might be getting a return of like a, you know, like a T-shirt or a hat or something. You know, something that the that the business does. Um, the Jobs Act, uh, which was passed in the beginning of 2012, was supposed to make crowdfunding easier, but the SEC is having a difficult time coming up with how to implement the legislation. Uh, and so we've, they've not come out with those rule changes yet. Uh, so being able to do crowdfunding with a monetary return on investment is going to be possible. Um, and so the Department, the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation actually has taken it upon themselves to create their own version of interstate crowdfunding. Um, so it, 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 they, they eliminated some regulations to make it easier for um, business on, owners to raise up to two million dollars uh, from a bunch of people. Um, and so that's, that's another, it's a new a new product in the state of Vermont that can be utilized by um, farmers and business owners to, to help raise capital. Uh, and, and slow money, Vermont. Um, so they're also, they're, their organization has just launched in September. Uh, they don't provide loans, but they act as a facilitator between investors and business owners. Uh, so it's similar to crowdfunding. Um, and so we're just in the beginning phases of that. Uh, I'm on the founding organ I'm one of the founding organize organizing members, um, and so there will be more news coming out over the next three or four months about that type of facilitation between um, ag-related business owners and investors. Um, and so that's it. Um, thank you. 
So, folks, are there any uh, additional questions for Josh or Sam at this point? If you have questions, please type them into the chat room and we can address those. And while we're waiting to see if there are more, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you all for coming. Please take a minute to go to our SurveyMonkey link that you see on the slide in front of you. Um, I'd like to remind people also that our next webinar will be on December 10th and will focus on poultry management and production. And we also have a number of other classes and programs coming up. And if you visit the New Farmer website at uh, uvm.edu slash newfarmer, you can learn more about all of those. And I'd like to thank Josh, Jerome, and Sam Smith again for joining us and all of you for joining us. Have a good afternoon.